What's good, YouTube? It's your boy J Soul, J Solarific, oh so solarific in the building, and I'm back again with another real rap video for y'all. I don't know why people be overtly hype when they do their intros, but I guess it's to get y'all hype. But yeah, we back again, man. It's been a while, man. I miss y'all. I hope y'all are doing good. This is gonna be one of them ones. Uh, you know, I just kind of want to get straight into straight into it. The topic of what it is. This is going to be, I guess, really apologetic. Um, the 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 style of the style of this talk, um, really, I guess, philosophical, still biblical. Um, and the topic, what I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about, because I've been pondering just the goodness of God and. You know, been listening to a lot of talks and and um, people from both sides of the fence, uh, saints and people who aren't saved, and people kind of just bringing into question the goodness of God, His nature. Um, if He's good, you know, why would He allow uh, people to be killed, or why would He kill um, people? You know, like the Canaanites, and why would He allow? Like, just why would he allow certain things? And then if God knows everything and he knows everything that we'll do um, and he knows that certain people will go to hell and knows that certain people will go to heaven, then why would he create people? You know, and just different um, iterations of that question. You know, if if God knew that Adam and Eve would eat the tree, then why did he put the tree down, you know, uh, in the garden? And then bringing into question his character, him being good, and saying, yo, I can't serve a God that would do that because I see evil all around. Or I can't serve a God who would, you know, let people be killed in a hurricane or let babies be killed. And all of this high-minded, um, all of our high-minded questions or all of the high-minded questions that society, um, not even questions for for but statements or beliefs, the, um, you know, that, that society brings up as a, as a, as a contention against God and why they don't have a relationship with him and why they won't serve him. Um, but it's, it's some form of God isn't good or there can be no good God if all of this is happening. And that's really kind of what I wanted to tackle is something that I've, I've struggled with. Um, I, I wouldn't want to say struggle for per se, but more so I couldn't really answer the question, um, you know, early on in my walk as a believer. And, and even now I'm still getting more clarity. I'm not saying that I know the answer to this, like in in, in its totality. Um, but what I am saying is that there is an answer and that when you're humble first, and if you're a believer and you retain or you, you retain the integrity or the nature of Christ, meaning like you don't allow what you don't understand or what you don't comprehend or what you read to make you consider that God is not good. Like when you can, when you resolve in your heart that he is good for if he wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Um, then, then I think you're on the right path to, to, to wisdom and understanding and revelation. I would also offer up even for people that aren't saved that if, if, if truth is something you're genuinely pursuing, then, um, I would call you or invite you um, to consider the Gospels in this in, in context and also to to really ask uh, ask to know the Lord like in the sense that like yo God if you're real reveal yourself to me um, he'll do that he'll do that uh, if truth is something you're really pursuing and if it's not you know, a case to reason against the the existence or the nature of God. Um, oftentimes, you know, we're not really like a lot of people that aren't saved, and even I, you know, we're not really on a on a quest for truth, or we're not really on a quest for revelation. We're really on a quest. Um, it, it's not really an intellectual thing, for real, for real. It's not a thing where it's like, oh, I just need truth. And once I get it, I'm good. Usually it's a heart posture. People just don't want to worship God. They don't want, they have to disprove his existence. They have to throw mud at his character because if, 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 if he is good and if he actually does exist and he did create me, then that means that like, that's the most important, the quintessential, most important thing 
if there is a God who created me um, and loves me and is good, then that means that he created me with a purpose. He couldn't have just created me for no reason at all. Uh, because to create with no purpose is, I think, maniacal. I think it's destructive. Um, so if that's true, then what is his relationship to me and who am I to him? And I think that is something that um, uh, the majority of us that want to live our own lives and live the way we want to live, we we either have to we either have to ra we we have to come up with some rationalization to disprove him, to discredit him, or uh, to def or to defame, or to bring him down, to tear you know, to make him less than God, or to just uh, say he doesn't exist at all. Um, so you know. If you're really someone who's pursuing truth, you'll find it in him. And and I would I would implore you or ask of you to consider uh, his writings or to consider his word and to look at it in context, to look at it um, with a humble heart to actually get truth. It's not like if you read the Bible, you're just, you know, like you're going to just mystically be converted or something like that. Um, but but really, it's an apprehension to to. Um, surrender. I don't think it's really a, a, an issue with, oh, nah, there's no way God could exist. As advanced as we are here in the West, as much technology as we have, as the things that, we, that we've that we seen <laughs> just in this century alone uh, testify the goodness and the nature of God. And even if we didn't have a Bible, the world would still testify of him. The order, um, the, the uh, you know, the intelligence and design, the utility and design, the uniformity of nature, all of these things uh, and the complexity, matter of fact, of just these, uh, you know, cellular organisms of, you know, structure, of just of even mathematics, you could go on and on and on, right? But what I really want to dive on, that's a whole nother thing. I'm, I'm here to talk about just the, the goodness of God and is God good? Um, so let's dive into that. Is God good? Now, this is... I want to center my whole, um, I guess, answer to this question in with an analogy, and I'll do my best again to to you know try to relay this correctly. But again, Holy Spirit, I pray that Holy Spirit would just kind of uh, relay this in the most effective way that'll bring revelation and maybe you know a kind of new perspective and idea to this topic but um i want to pose a question like this if you're if you're for my males and my females that are watching this um if you had for those that do have children and for those that will doesn't matter but just imagine that you're getting ready to have a child and god reveals to you every trial every um hardship that child will go through not even uh, we haven't even gotten to what they will actually do that may not be that that may be wrong but just the the, the, the sort of the sort of trials they'll have to endure this the the heartbreak and let's say god showed you all of that so you know, let's say you're, you're gonna have a you know a child and you just get a revelation, you just get a picture of every single thing they will go through, right? So every breakup, every, you know, uh, every failure, every loss, whether that's career relational loss or, um, or emotional, every emotional toil, every, you know, every tear that they would shed, like God showed you all of that. <laughs> the Like everything and a, a complete a dossier of, of what your child that you're getting ready to have is going to go through now on that an added layer on that let's add the layer of everything that they would do right so all of the wrong things or bad things that they would do um god showed you all of that so god showed you every time they would steal every time they would lie every time they would cheat every time they would be disloyal every time there would be jealousy or envy in their heart every time there would be covetiveness like if they murder every time you know showed you that like i'm talking about everything a complete um 
a complete just just book of what your child that you're getting ready to have is going to do the life that they're going to live and then you know everything completely if, if it's sexual perversion if it's sexual perversion whatever it is i'm saying everything that they would do either to themselves or to somebody else right so i really want to paint that picture for you there um so the first part of that is everything that would happen to them so what that's whether that's falling off a bicycle and scraping their knee or getting into a car accident or or uh you know getting into a fight and then breaking a bone or breaking a limb or or getting afflicted with some type of you know disease or or getting even a common cold or you know whatever the case is or or alopecia just what like anything you can think of that you would just rather not go through that you would consider to be um bad or not good or not convenient and that would happen to them and then the things that they would do that also too would either uh infringe on their own uh intrinsic value or the value of somebody else or just breaking a law or something like that now let's say god showed you all of that would you still have that child It's a pause there for you to, to think about that. Would you still have that child if you knew that this kid would do um, some pretty atrocious things or that they would go through some things that would be really uh, inconvenient? Now, for the majority of you guys, you guys would probably say that no, that would be wrong for me to have that kid um, because I wouldn't want to have a kid that would go through anything like that. and you may even consider it that it would be a good thing to not have a child um, that would go through it, you know, things like that or or do things like that. Um, you would probably consider it to be good to not have that child, right? For some of you. But for those of you that are like, no, I would still have the kid. Does that make you uh, a bad person? Does it make you now not good? because you you chose to have a kid that you knew would it would would experience hardship and then maybe even um even participate in 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 uh in persecuting people or you know doing bad things would that make you a bad parent i'm putting these pauses in there so that you can really think about what i'm saying now, in my opinion, I would say no. I think that if, if you know, God were to show me that, I'm going to say a son. I'm going to have a son, and like the minute my, my wife is pregnant, I'm not married, but, you know, my uh, future wife, say that, um, you know, God shows to me everything that kid is going to go through and everything that he's going to do. And I still have that child. I wouldn't be a bad parent. I would still be a good parent. I would only be a bad parent if I didn't equip them or give them every necessary tool and every necessary um, and, and equip them emotionally and, you know, just physically to be able to to be able to um, go through and overcome every trial, every and every test, um, every tribulation and to overcome every uh, every form of suffering, right? I wouldn't be if I equipped them in order to uh, navigate through a life or through a world where they would be exposed to hardship. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be bad if I equipped them and if I prepared them with everything that they would need. And ultimately, I wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't be. Um, I couldn't be considered a bad parent or evil if I loved them and I was creating them uh, out of love and love doesn't ab leave abandoned um, love doesn't abandon it doesn't abandon it, it you know love is not doesn't leave people desolate love equips and love affirms and love um, protects right a child and if you chose to still have that child would that make you a bad parent or would that make you no longer good, right? Now, I say no, because if you are having that child out of love, 
and you equip that child with everything that they need in order to to overcome their evil desires um and to and to live a good overall decent to, to live a good life by your standards as a parent then i wouldn't consider you to be bad however that kid has free will so they have the choice to either um walk in the way that you have trained them to walk or to depart from it and live the way they want to live um, and pursue their own desires now those desires may be evil that's the choice that every parent takes when they decide to have children period you can love your kids that doesn't mean your kids will love you back that doesn't mean that your kids will live a life that 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 you would quantify as honorable but that doesn't make you evil just because you chose to have these children now the bible is very emphatic in that it says train a kid up in the way that they should go and then i believe that when they are old they won't depart from it i'm gonna find it though for you so proverbs 26 6 yeah it says and then when he is old he won't depart from it so train up a child in the way that he should go not that they will go but that he should go so that means that they won't they may or may not choose to go that way but train them up in the way that they ought go right and when they are old they will not depart from it so what am i saying i'm saying that when that when i have a child it will be my prerogative first i i'm having a child because I love, because I myself, my nature, my being is love. And as a result of that, love in and of itself demands community. So I create another person in my image, in my likeness. Matter of fact, that person is as my own body. They have my very essence. They have my very nature. They have, they have my makeup, right? They're just in another form but our spirit, their spirit is my spirit. So it is now me communing with myself in another form. So when I have a, a son, when I have a daughter, they are as my own body, right? In another form, same spirit. And I'm having communion or fellowship with myself, right? And I am training them up or bringing them to the revelation or to the awareness of who I am and training them up in love and equipping them with every excellent tool that they need in order to live a godly life so that they live a godly life or a life that is honorable, um, that is honorable, not only to me, um, but to those whom they're also to doing life with. And I believe that was the, the intent of God's design. Now, you know, if God did that, or if God started all of, you know, the world off already fallen and did it that way, then I could understand why people would say, oh, God isn't good. However, from the original intent, we see that God had created an environment where sin was not introduced to man. God had knowledge of it, but man didn't. Right now, because he because God has to give man the ability to disobey he puts um a, the tree in the garden and gives man the, the the his command do not eat of this tree however they still had the 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 free will to be able to say i will eat of it so god had trained them up in the way that they ought go or he had he had given them commands to follow that would have ensured that they would never experience pain or suffering or evil or death or anything that is not found in the nature of Christ. Though Christ has the ability, though, uh, you know, life and death are, are exclusive, are, are things that Christ exclusively, like he can do. Um, at that time, before man sinned, man knew nothing of death, man knew nothing of murder, man knew nothing of evil desire. Man just had the ability to either uh, 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 agree and say yes to what Jesus had said or say no. 
completely and totally perfect in 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 being in spiritually and then also to in being they had a uncorrupted vessel a vessel that had not been corrupted by sin now um god gives you know this mandate to to them they knew nothing of death they didn't know what death was they didn't know what murder was they didn't know what it meant to be disobedient they didn't even know uh if you think about it they didn't even know what forgiveness meant they had done nothing which would require them to be forgiven so they were just experiencing the full the the, the complete and total unmerited it, it, that is what if, if when we when we think of um an oasis or when we think of a utopia that is what i think of right that wasn't that was a utopia um where there was no evil so the naivete or the naivete of that environment of that of that um convenience of of you not, of you not even having any awareness of this of darkness and of evil um was is a utopia now they have the free will to either continue to obey God and experience this abundant life where there's no evil or to disobey. Now, <laughs> in, 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 we know ultimately what they chose to do, right? But, and now as a result of that, we know that God can give life and that he can also take life away, right? But now, human beings, after disobedience and eating of the fruit, are, are taking life away from one another. So evil now is, has been introduced or has entered into the nature of man and changed the nature of, a man, of man from good or holy, because goodness means to be holy, to now evil. Now, that's why the Bible says there is no one good but God. And I'm going to bring that verse up. You know, the, 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 I think when a, a man was asking Jesus what he must do to be saved, he said, good, he said, uh, good, sir, uh, good teacher or something like that. And God says, why do you call me good? There's no one good but God. Then he goes on to say, uh, he, he goes on to expound on the commandments. He says, you, you know, you know what you ought to do. These are the commandments. And he, he, he speaks that. So goodness is not goodness and rightness are, are, are two different things in the sense that um, I can know, I can do the right thing or I can do something right in the sense that um, I can, I can, you know, someone, someone's wallet can fall out of their pocket, for example, and I can see it and run and return it onto the person that doesn't necessarily make me a good person just because I did the right thing now a lot of people may not agree with that however there are plenty of people that do right things or or things that they would determine to be even good things but that doesn't mean that their nature itself is good see goodness isn't just performative goodness isn't just like it's not just um acts of service even though goodness does uh does uh even though goodness is expressed in what you do goodness isn't first doesn't first start there um or isn't a is, is, is if anything it's just affirmed or validated in the way that you live however goodness is primarily a state of being it's a it's a nature your nature your being who you be itself is good and therefore you do good things so it's not you do it's not because you do good things that you are a good person it's because you are good you have been made good that you do good things that's the equation it's always it's it, you know being precedes uh performance it's not performance that you you know if and if anything um, being preceding performance, performance affirms or validates being. However, what we do is that we we perform to become or we think that our performance validates our being and that is incorrect. You know, um, there are a lot of people who aren't good and we call them good because they do good things. However, their hearts and what they, but if you could see on their, if you could see like in a, on a big screen, the things that they think about or their desires their or their desires like the true desires on the, on the inside of the heart you'd be surprised it seemed like two different people 
you know, but we, we, we don't see beyond. A lot of us are superficial in, in, in our depth perception. We don't truly see beyond and we don't, um, we don't ponder or, or think beyond what we, what we can, what we can fathom or see. Now, <clears throat> anyway, so God himself so that's why in the Bible, when, when, when Jesus is saying to this man, he says that no one is good but God, what he is saying isn't that there's other pe- that, that there aren't people that do seemingly good things or right things, but what he is saying is that there is nobody that is good but God, or in other words, there's nobody that is holy but God. God is, goodness is holiness. Goodness isn't, oh, I returned your wallet, you know, um, because for me to give somebody's wallet back to them it, when they dropped it is not a holy act per se. It's, it's just the right thing to do. However, the reason why God would consider that good is because I myself am holy. So the works that I do are holy and acceptable unto the Lord, right? So, so period, I don't have to consider, oh dang, is that, was that holy, was that this, was that that? If, if, if I did it from a pure place, if I myself, if the intent was love, if I was being guided by love and wisdom, you know, because love is wise, you know, or a wise, mature love, it's not blind. It's not, you know, love is not hardship and pain, though love endures that. It is love in and of itself does not cause pain. Love endures pain because it loves people that don't deserve to be loved, but are worth being loved. And that's been validated because Christ died for us. Now, at the end of the day, I Christ was saying that no one is holy but God. If And, and that's true, because if there was anyone holy, and this is also to Bible, Christ would have need not die. He would have, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have needed to come and die because there would have been holy persons on the earth. Not one was righteous. So back to that analogy again of if you were to have a child and you could see everything that they would do, all of the evil desires that they would have and all of the evil things that they would do, would you still have that kid? The question is, and if you say no, then you have to also posit what makes you any different from that child. You see what I'm saying? Because you yourself are no different. We are no different from the people that we judge or condemn just because or their crap doesn't mean that they are any less uh, uh, or that they're, that we're any that we're less or worse than they are or greater than they are because you know that person killed or that person stole but I just you know I just cheated or I just you know lied on a test or whatever now nah, holiness is beyond action it's it's the state of your heart so as a result of that even if you were to never act upon an evil desire which you had you would still in the eyes of God be considered to be evil You know, God says it, you know, he says, he says, you have heard it said that if, a, you know, if a man, uh, you know, uh, 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 commits adultery or this and the third, that that's a sin. He says, but I say that even if you look at a woman with, with, with lustful intent, you have committed, you know, a, a, a fornication or adultery. And then goes on to say that you say, you have heard it said that, you know, if you t- for, to kill your brother is murder. I say that for you to have to harbor hate in your heart towards somebody else, you have also to committed murder. <laughs> Bro. So for anybody who has hated somebody, you've murdered. Because what perce- what leads somebody to murder someone anyway is that there is hatred in their heart for another for another people. What what leads somebody to take a uh, 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 you know to, to you know Mr. Steal your Mr. Steal your girl? What leads somebody to steal somebody's chick, or to steal somebody's wife, or to steal somebody's or, you know for a woman to take someone's husband? It's lust. It's 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 coveting something you don't have, and the value that you attach to something that you don't have, something forbidden. There's a there's a there's a sensual attraction and pull to things that we. That, that are forbidden that we don't have right to. Um, so let's keep going. 
you know so 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 that's why god says that there's no one holy no one is holy no one is good but god and jesus was even saying that about himself that's how you know he did everything he did as a man fully god but fully in the flesh in the likeness of corruptible flesh he was even saying, I myself am not good. Though I have an excellent spirit, a, a perfect spirit, I am in a corruptible body that is susceptible to, to, to temptation. And as a result of that, I even, and you have to understand too, God humbled himself. He did not, he did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped or something to, you know, as, as an entitlement that he could exercise or exert over people or to lord it over people but he humbled himself made himself a servant right so so yo i'm not good i i fully rely on relationship and communion with christ in order to to live pure or acceptable unto god that i might be able to die uh for all of you now again back to that um explanation that you know the analogy that i was saying is if you wouldn't have that kid because they of the evil desires that god would have revealed to you then you yourself if your parents that had you could see what you would do they probably wouldn't have chosen to have you either and then you would just have and if if we go that if we take that all the way back because like i said no one is holy no one is good but god especially back then in the old testament post the uh, uh you know the crucified christ you know, the only reason why I can claim holiness isn't because of anything that I've done. It's because I have the life of Christ that I have freely received by faith. Anything apart from that, I'm not holy. So I'm not good. So at the end of the day, if 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 that's the case, no one would be born. If, if that's the case, if, you know, we might as well say that God shouldn't have created human beings at all. Because there, there's no um, there's no iteration or or or. Or generation of, of man that God would have created where uh, where whatever iteration of Eve or Adam he would have created if they were imbued with free will they would have still ate the tree they would have still ate from the fruit of the tree so it doesn't matter what kind of iteration because they would have to, 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 for them to be like Christ they would have to have the ability to not to, to choose to reject him so as a result of that there has to be um, something that is placed there that gives them access to what God would not want them to have access to because of the pain and the affliction it would bring upon them. And that's how you know God is good. If God wasn't truly good, why didn't he just start everything off from where we were where we were already fallen and then just came and died? But no, he showed us what his intent and his design was. Not that any man should suffer. But now we have to endure suffering, and it's something that he prompts. Matter of fact, it's a pre, it, it's it's a it's a it's a preliminary, uh, it's a it's a it's a disclaimer. Matter of fact, it's an initial disclaimer to anyone who gets saved. I think if you get saved, the very next thing is, hey, you will endure suffering because you bear my name, not my name, but his name. You will endure suffering. Doesn't make God not good. He lives in you. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So none of us would be, would be born. If God was like, look, I'm not, if I create, if I, I, I know already I create Adam and Eve. I've seen, he's outside of time. The meaning he's seen the end from the beginning. He knows exactly how things will end. So everything, he saw it. So him, he is the chief or the, 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 the first parent right and all of our other parents or the parents that we we observe are from god's original intent were supposed to be were conduits parents that operated like him and raised up other future parents fathers and mothers true adam and eves holy that had families that were raised and trained up with the freedom with the free will to choose to either accept that love or to reject it and if you were to reject it there are consequences there is a suffering there is a hardship that you would endure that doesn't make god not good because you chose to disobey him and it doesn't make god good uh, it doesn't make god any less good that he chose to create you knowing that you would reject him 
because he equipped you with everything you would need in order to know him and have life and life more abundantly. So if God were to have, you know, and, and which he knew, so it's not if God were, but if God was like, man, they're going to kill one another. They're going to rape one another. They are going to hate and envy one another. They are going to, uh, they're going to commit genocide. They will oppress each other. They will, they will, um, covet, you know, they will be jealous. They will, they, they'll backbite, you know, people, people will hate people created in their own image, bless and curse people will curse people created and made in the image and the likeness of God and as a result of that not only did would people themselves be um, evil towards one another but the state of the world in which they occupy itself will now become broken and the climate natural disasters even the earth itself corrupt dying slowly dying you think that was God's intent and design that the earth would just slowly be, be getting you, you know uh, colder I believe is what's happening But, you know, the earth is spinning at like 6,000 miles per hour. And we're, at, I think, around the sun. So the sun isn't going up and down around us. If I think, I believe, I hope I'm correct. My science people out there, y'all get me right. But anyway, if God, God seeing all of this and said, you know what? Because I'm good, I'm not going to create human beings. That wouldn't make him good. Because what would he also to be depriving human beings created in his image from? Love. Experiencing love. Experiencing sacrifice. Experiencing patience, joy. Experiencing happiness. Experiencing love. You know, again. Grace and just relationship with God and, and, and relationship life abundant. He would also to be depriving humanity of that what he would really in essence be depriving humanity of his relationship with him and and in his opinion his ultimate opinion no or just truth that would be evil to not create human beings that could know him and be known by him that would be evil and he's greater than evil he's greater than any trial or tribulation or any wickedness he's above it all so why would he why would he why would he why would he be a, a why would there be a, a, a apprehension to create if he is above all things why does a parent and a mother and a father choose to have a kid if they don't have the means of being able to provide for that child like idealistically the ideal parent. I'm not talking about parents that just have kids and, and you know, the kids grow up with, you, you know, impoverished. That's what I'm talking about. Even though we observe these things. I'm talking about ide like the ideal family structure. A mother and a father uh, that, you know, have done things, quote, unquote, just generally the right way. Your hallmark parents. No parent should want to have kids that they can't provide for it just doesn't make sense you're 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 bringing into life something you can't or someone you can't take care of that's already an l so how it ought to be is that when parents decide to have kids they're having kids because they know that they can provide for that their you know those kids not only financially but emotionally and spiritually raising them in order to to be effective human beings in society that will affect change or add something of value to the overall society and then and then in turn create their own family unit that just ends up uh that that is after the family unit that they came out of 
right? But that's not the way it is. And to not want to have kids because of the apprehension to what they would go through and you quantifying in your mind or you qualifying that that you are good as a result of not wanting to have kids because they will endure hardship. You're also, you're not, you're evil because you're, 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 you're depriving that child from relationship with you and from, and, and from experiencing love. Period. You know, so when you choose to create the way, at the state of the way in which the world is right now, when you choose to have kids and you choose to, to procreate, at the end of the day, you're, you're, it's not even a risk it's a fact your kids will your kids will endure hardship and they might even they might even uh contribute to making things hard <laughs> that doesn't make you bad it doesn't make you bad it doesn't make you any less no if you love them and you equip them with what they need in order to live productive and good lives see what i'm saying period so goodness isn't, oh, nothing bad ever happens to me or to the people around me that I love, um, or I never experience a, you know, a scrape or, you know, externally and internally everything is perfect. That's not goodness. That's not, that's not what makes, that's not an ideal, uh, let me be careful how I phrase this. That is not like the state of the world right now doesn't not doesn't make god any less good we can't say that because of the things that we observe he isn't good because there's murder and this and there's that you doing that human beings are doing that freely they're not determined to kill they're not determined to to rape And even if there are even if there are chemical imbalances where people are born this way, and you know, as there is science that that is out there that affirms that people can be born, um, you know, w with I guess murder intent, or people can be born gay, or people can be born, uh, you know, it's the same thing. People can be born parap paraplegic. So there, there's so we're 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 human beings are being born or coming out not the way they were intended to to come out. You know, we're, we're, we're experiencing now in birth, iter, like iterations or modes of the human being that were not God's original intent and design. You think God had a design that, that he would want to create somebody that would violate his law uh, and then judge that person? It's like that person is determined. If that person was determined to be a murderer, how can God judge that person who was programmed to murder, right? Um, so it, it, it's, it's almost, it would be maniacal at that point. It's just like, okay, you know, but that's not the case. So even though, even though that is something that I do believe, like, you know, I, I can't, um, uh, I can't debunk that, you know, that, you know, that, uh, those, I guess, results or that science, what I, what I've, I think kind of come to the conclusion of is that at the end of the day regardless of what people are born into christ has called all of us to be born again that's why when he was talking to nicodemus i believe um you know nicodemus was like yo what do i have to do to be saved matter of fact i'm gonna find it john 3 1 let me just read from there right jesus teaches nicodemus so so verse one now there was a prophecy i mean a pharisee a man named nicodemus who was the member of the jewish ruling council so he was up there, you know, religious guy. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, which means teacher. We know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And what he's talking about is the fulfilling of the prophecies that he would get. Like there's prophecies that were um, that were revealed before Christ even physically uh, came into the likeness of sinful flesh that would that talked about the manner of his birth how he would die what he would do like i'm talking about very complicated and complex very detailed prophecies and he was fulfilling them all uh so jesus responds in verse three jesus replied very truly i tell you no one can see the kingdom of god unless they are born again 
So verse four, how can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked, like what? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother into their mother's womb. And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my sayings. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. <laughs> and I think I might do a uh, like an in depth of that later. I want, but I want to kind of want to stick to what I'm on. So at the end of the day, to my point of people being born. Um, you know, I, I would say just I don't, not to be insensitive, but just people not being born or the originally the way God had intended for them to be born. Because even when someone is born paraplegic, quadriplegic, or they're born conjoined, that to me is not God's original intent and design. It's not something we saw from the beginning. If it was God's intent and design, we would have saw it from the beginning. Um, however, uh, when, when when man is born, man has a soul, but his spirit isn't alive onto Christ. In the sense that what, what, he has a spirit, but his spirit is dead. And what that just means is that the spirit of Jesus himself isn't dwelling on the inside of this person. So um, they're they're in essence spiritually dead. So so this person that is born can be born a number of different ways as we have seen in life, as we have seen uh, scientifically, people are born a myriad of ways and not just physical physical um, infirmities or, uh, or complications, but also to physiological infirmities and um, complications of the mind as well, you know. And, and I believe that people can be born gay or born with, uh, with you know, with a propensity to just want to murder people and their minds are wired a, a completely different way. But the Bible is emphatic and it says that man must be born again. Nobody is good but God. And and to be born again, I believe that that has not, I believe that that has not just, um, I don't think that's just a, 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 a inward thing I believe that the that to be born again has even physiological um, implications as well, in the sense that to get saved, you you become a new creation, and to me, that's not just in your being, in your nature, where you now go back to uh, to the to, to the nature that God intended from the beginning in Genesis, but also to I believe wholeheartedly that even your physiological biology changes. And that's not to say that every Christian that gets saved that had, like, for example, somebody had lupus or sickle cell or whatever, or was, or they were conjoined or had a missing limb, that these things just immediately uh, uh, go back to um, original intent. But what I am saying is that there are cases of people that have gotten saved where this has happened. And just because we're not seeing it doesn't mean that it isn't happening. Um, and, and I believe at the end of the day... Now, when someone gets born again, whatever it is that's keeping them from living, um, living the uh, an abundant life, a life in which, and, and that's not just outwardly, abundant isn't just like external, abundant is also internally flourishing within, abounding in the fruit of the spirit of God, patience, love, joy, peace, so on and so forth. And I think that, that whatever is prohibiting them to do that, so if it is a physiological um, imbalance or complication in the mind that causes someone to have a propensity to kill. I believe that if the spirit would get on the inside of in the inside of them, God could rectify their mind. If someone would lay hands and pray and believe um, that 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 their mind could become sober um, and 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 sensible and a heart and a, and have a mind that can truly receive and know Christ. Um, and, and ultimately experience the abundant life that Christ had always intended for that person to have. Uh, so just because we are seeing a different, just because we are seeing um, a difference in the intent of God doesn't mean that that is what he intended. So like I said, again, if I, if I knew 
if if like, going back to this analogy with with if me being a parent if, if god were to give me wind that i would have a kid that would that would be born without a leg or something like that or they would be born conjoined or twins conjoined or 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 a kid quadriplegic or if god were to give me the notion that my kid would be born gay or whatever, whatever we see that people are born a particular type of way, and all these debates about well, no, I know people are people can be born gay because we're trying to we're trying to protect the the nature the or the or the deity or the goodness of God. You don't need to, you know. That's why God puts in authentically the scriptures as they are, because there isn't anything scripturally that you can use to try to 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 prove God not good. I find it funny, matter of fact, ironic that people use the Bible to try to prove that God isn't a good God you know um (laughs) i find that hilarious so you're using scripture to try to say that god isn't good or that okay but if god were to give me notion of that hey junior your son is gonna you know grow uh he's gonna be born gay even if that's challenging or that's hard for me that doesn't mean that like i'm not gonna say well dang you know god isn't good or that you know because he would allow that i know that's i know that wasn't god's original intent and design However, we're living in a state that is broken and sin even to, if the word of God, it says that the word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged blade, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, even of joint and marrow, meaning that the word of God has not only spiritual implications, but physical implications as well. Everything that we see physically is because there is a spiritual world or realm um, that we cannot see that is not visible to the human eye that is at work. So, so for Rofro, the physical world is the effect of what's happening and taking place in the supernatural realm. Um, so at the end of the day, I, I know his original intent. I know what God's intent and design was when he created the human vessel. And I know that when I mentally and physiologically, and I know that when I see something that, that, is, that is a deviation from, uh, uh, from his original intent and design, I'm not going to now look at that instance and say, well, okay, God isn't good or this is how God created this person. I disagree. I would just say that what I'm seeing is the result of 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 just sin is the result of a of years, hundreds and thousands of years of man living in a system that he was never intended to live in. And and you'd look at it with your body, period. When you when you have a, a sickness that is in your body and it goes untreated, how much worse is it by the time you realize what you have? You know, the state of your vessel, of your being is so farly, is so, is so, is so, is so compromised at that particular point, right? So um, I, that's how I look at it. And I, I think at the end of the day, not to say that people that are quite like, that are quadriplegic or, or that are gay um, or born that way, or people that are born with mental, um, you know, uh, psychological imbalances or, 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 or complications are, are evil, but what I'm saying is that is or that or that like they chose that to be their you know their reality or anything like that. But what I am saying is that the infirmity or the thing that they are dealing with itself is evil, um, and that God wants that person to be born again because at the end of the day, they themselves are not good. You know, um, no one is good, and there I believe there's an age of accountability where we all arrive at a particular age where we know the difference between right and good. And, and God is just, like if somebody doesn't know something, um, I think we will all be judged according to what we know um, and to what has been revealed to us. And I believe that is what we will be judged with. So everyone's judgment to me is now is gonna be different. It, it will all be um, against the holiness of God, but at the end of the day, it'll be different because at not, not no two people know the same things or were exposed to the same things. Um, but at the end of the day, what you have been exposed to and, and to the degree of awareness that you have um, and accountability um, in the knowledge that, because the minute you become aware of a truth, you are accountable to what has been revealed to you, period. Uh, so whether you believe that or not, it's just what it is. If I tell you that fire burns, the minute, like it, it will burn your flesh and you go and you touch that, you're accountable already off rip from knowing. So if you now go and choose to touch and burn your hands, that is a judgment that you know, that's a consequence that you now had to endure. You were accountable. You knew what you ought to have done. So 
um, I think I think that is where I'm going to tie this up. I think we're pushing on an hour here with this, but um, man, I, I might have to kind of do a part two or whatever, or break this um, video down into two parts so that it's easier for people to digest. But anyway, um, or maybe just make it a whole thing because yeah, whatever. But it's your boy Jay Soul, oh so solarific. Ah, thank y'all for watching this. Um, I hope this touched y'all. I hope y'all got some things out of it. I, it's a lot of deep things I spoke about. And if there's anything that you would love for me to kind of go in, a, like to really kind of break down or, you know, something that you felt like I touched on, but didn't really hit it. Like you would like me to hit it a little bit more. Let me know in the comments, um, you know, like, share, comment. If you feel led to, if this is something that you feel like other people should know or whatever let's get a discussion going you know what i mean if you don't agree with me or any other things that i said that's fine um it you know uh it's all good you feel what i'm saying I, at the end of the day i hope my message was kind of like clear i hope i said the things that i had to say but i think the heart of what i said i believe i got that out there now the semantics may not have been all the uh, all the way there however but i do feel like as if I, i've delivered the the heart of or the context of what i was trying to get at and that is that god is good um and and when i say he is good he's holy and and we cannot ascribe goodness to ourselves because we we you know we donate to charities at the end of the day um the goodness is is a nature that you get from a, a a infinite being who is in and of itself that you know it's not something you ascribe to yourself because you do good things um or you do right things so anyway i'm gonna leave y'all with that i love you guys um and yeah till next time man